Hello and welcome to A Thousand Whys. I'm Huang Rei. Regular listeners of our podcast will recall previous episodes that showed how the ancients were already entertaining fantasies about flying into the heavens in the remote past of China's history, Nuwa, Chang'e, etc. The ancients were keen observers of the moon and the stars, scrutinizing the skies in search of clues and omens. That might predict the fortunes of agricultural, military, and other important undertakings. It is fair to say that the ancients did more than just gaze at the stars and long to touch the sky. In fact, some in ancient China did make actual attempts to fly up into the heavens. The capacity to do so was considered a characteristic of the gods, a feat worthy of divinity. And yet, attempts to conquer the heavens were only beginning. In this episode of our Space Talk series, I will share with you some of these fun and inspiring stories from the dawn of Chinese history. <laughs> You and I are living in times of unending rocket launches and space flights. Unlike people in our generation, however, the ancients lived in a time when such modes of transportation would have been the stuff of absolute fantasy. Not to be daunted, however, our forefathers went about conceiving and building some rudimentary flying machines. Our ancestors thought of smart ways to draw from the secrets of a bird's ability to fly. Its wings. Yes, picture the image of a man engaging in the extreme sport of wingsuit flying. A birdman attempts to skydive by imitating the movements of a bird in flight with his body, while wearing a special designed inflatable suit. Well, that's basically what certain people tried to do in ancient China. Their tools and the contraptions that they made were somewhat rudimentary, of course. Tales about these daring exploits have been recorded in a classic text known as Han Shu, or the Book of Han. It was published in 111 A.D. The book is a history of China, mainly covering the Western Han Dynasty, especially from 206 B.C. to 23 A.D. It recounts the intriguing story of Wang Mang, a powerful courtier in the Western Han Dynasty, who went on to establish the short-lived Xin Dynasty. The story goes that needing to protect the realm against intrusions from the north. He ordered the recruitment of warriors with special talents, in a bid to create something a bit like the special forces seen today. <laughs> a lot of people came forward seeking to be considered for this special assignment. Among them was a man who claimed to be the perfect scout. He said. He would spy on the country's enemies along the length of the northern border, because he could travel a thousand miles a day by flight. The claim would obviously have appeared absurd at that time, but Wang Mang could not help his curiosity. The emperor asked the man to show his flying skills as a test. To everyone's surprise, the man was indeed able to take to the skies. He did so by using two huge artificial wings made of bird's feathers that were strapped to his body, and coin springs that he attached to the soles of his feet. He landed after a short distance. If the record is to be trusted. This anonymous but legendary individual might have been the first man to make a successful flight attempt in China. Yet another story tells of an attempt 
made in ancient China to take to the heavens. It is the tale of a man who tried to fly to the moon. Legend has it that an official named Wan Hu, who lived about 700 years ago, was obsessed with the stars and dreamed of getting himself closer to them. He built a special spacecraft, albeit a rudimentary one, using a chair with some 47 large rockets strapped to the backrest. He sat in a chair and held two huge kites in his hands. A number of assistants then lit the rockets all at once and stepped aside. Unfortunately, Wang Hu's attempt at flight failed. In the end, it cost him his life. Though this tragic yet fearless attempt may very well be no more than the fruit of an imagination enchanted with the romance of space flight, the spirit of Wang Hu gained so much respect not only in China but also abroad. As a result, the lunar impact crater on the moon's far side has been named after this legendary figure by the International Astronomical Union. Well, I guess it's fair to say that the Chinese people have never relented in their long cherished pursuit of ways to reach the stars and touch the sky. The stories we have brought to you in today's podcast are a mere selection. There are many more legends and myths that attest to the yearning to fly to the moon and venture into outer space, nursed by people in ancient China. For generations, those beautiful and romantic dreams remained just that, dreams. Until now, these ancient dreams have become reality in our times. Won't you be proud for our ancestors? That's it for this episode of Thousand Wise. Be sure to give us a rating or leave us a comment if you liked our show. Until next time, I'm Huang Rei. Bye for now.